Hall's Chop House is taking their delectable steaks and quality service to Nashville. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with the CEO of Hall's Chop House, Tommy Hall, for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Tommy Hall, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. What's happening, Quentin? <laughs> it's going great. You know, the last time I saw you was over at my beloved St. Philip's Church. Actually, it's your church because you're an active member there. And I was on my way to work that day and it was a very busy day. <laughs> and I told you I wanted to do an interview with you, obviously, about the upcoming Halls Chop House Nashville, which is a huge news around the Southeast right now. And I know that you all are going to be opening up, what, May 30th, I believe? You know, give or take in the restaurant world. You know, it's um, that opening day. It's always moving. It's always changing. Um, I'm telling my friends that want to travel there to maybe book their tickets in early June, just because you never know. Um, there's Memorial Day in, in the mix there, and that is May uh, 30th. Right. So um, if I can try to get in before that or, or just right after that, that would be ideal. What's moving and changing about, obviously, the opening of Howell's Chop House Nashville? Mm-hmm. Say it one more time. Yeah, what's moving and changing as yeah. far as getting close to the opening of Hall's Chop House Nashville? So it's just, you know, opening a restaurant in 2022, uh, coming off a pandemic, um, and that you all hear that supply chain, right? And, but it's true. It, it's, it's amazing. It's um, small wares, our plates and forks and spoons, glassware, martini glasses and wine glasses. Those are delayed. Um, you know, our equipment is coming in. We'll have, um, you know, our full stoves and ranges and, and then, but you're missing maybe an ice machine that's delayed. So it's funny. Um, some things are no problem right on time. Some things take a little bit longer with this great, uh, beautiful, when you walk in the halls in Nashville, I know you'll probably give me a chance to paint the picture of it, but, um, we have a 1200 bottle wine display, cooled, temperature controlled. Uh, but th right now we're having a tough time getting the actual, um, you know, the HVAC kind of unit component to um, keep it cool. So um, all the wines, you know, up there, but we got to get the got to get it cooled off the right temperature. Wow. How do you paint Nashville? Yeah. You know, um, it, this is going to be a, just the most, our most spectacular restaurant and uh, I've ever seen. And of all the halls, it's a combination of, Charleston and Columbia and Greenville and Somerville and all into one and into the music city into on broad Broadway, excuse me. Um, Broadway is the main drag of, of Nashville. It's right where Broadway and West end split, and right over I 65 yeah. head West towards Vanderbilt. Right. And it's going to be uh, the flagship steakhouse right off of the, the main drag. And it's just going to have it all. It really wow. is. It's going to have a beautiful outdoor patio. It's going to have a big, vibrant, lively bar. We have an open kitchen, very unique to a Hall's Chop House. Uh, it's glassed in. You can see the, the chefs at work. And uh, then the unbelievable private dining settings towards the back. And then the back back, we're going to do a little ode to my father. We're going to do Bill's Bar and uh, about a 45-seat bar. Um, overlooking the Nashville skylight. Wow. And in my research, I know before he passed away, he actually went up to, to Nashville with you to tour this particular mm -hmm. location. If you were to look at this location now, Tommy, what would he say? He, you know, he's still here. He's still, he's still driving it right now. He, uh, yeah, but no, he saw it. He picked out this location. Wow. Yeah, I think it's everything he wanted. And, uh, and the way he, it's coming together, it's forming together right now. Um, that's what he'd be so proud of. And what he would say though, is let's go. Why are we not open yet? Let's go. <laughs> he said, we, we have one time we said January and that was February. Now it's, you know, we're in April. Right. So we're, but we're less than 60 days out from making this happen. Who is Tommy Hall 60 days out? Man, we're probably a little more stressed, a little more, uh, but, but very proud. I'll tell you this, you know, I'm so proud of our team. And the people that are, are really making this happen, uh, from the architects to the construction uh, men and women, that they're just out there working at it, fine, fine detailing the restaurant to make it look great. 
we have a great general manager in place and and um, they're, they're hiring right now as we speak and I'm very blessed we had over first day we put ad out we had over 80 applicants so people want to get back to work and they want to work at a place they're proud of and, uh, and that's what we're going to do at Halls Nashville what Nashville why now you know um, Nashville is a, just a great very very you know great city there's a lot of great competition uh, but why not Nashville you know why not it's our first venture outside the state of South Carolina as a brand and uh, you know just really I think it's it's a you know being in Nashville too there's a lot of great people have been there for a long long time there's a lot of people moving there from California Texas New York and just a vibrant lots going on and I just love this location and the whole family does and we just feel like we can really plant our flag there and and, uh, and get back to Nashville and uh, that's what we want to do how did Hull's Chop House meet Nashville you know, I, I think by luck, the, really the, the developers of this great Broad West development, they were big fans. And they would dine in Charleston and Columbia and Greenville and Somerville. They were very impressed with what we did, and they really wanted us. They, they called my dad, and, and we finally went up there. And I remember going up. I said, Dad, we're too late. We should have been up in Nashville 10 years ago. Huh. And uh, But we got there. I felt like this is just the right time. Right time. Did you miss anything while trying to get there? Uh, you know, I, I probably, it's probably too early to, to answer that, you know. Uh, maybe in a month or two, I go, oh, man, we forgot this and this. But right now, we're really, you know, we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's and making sure everything is just right. Do you, I know that you have a team behind you, obviously, but do you have the energy and time to ensure the success of this particular expansion? You know, absolutely. Yeah, we do. You know, this is just this is just so important to us and, and to the brand, to the people. We were really, you know, putting together such a great team. And, um, we'll, we'll, we'll create the energy, you know, and you get you get the nervous butterflies. You're excited. And, um, I've caught up on my sleep this spring and I'm ready to go. And we're feeling good. My family, we're going to move up to Nashville this summer and be a part of the community in the city. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Hopefully you'll find a great church just like St. Philip's there. When you think of the restaurant and obviously it calls Chop House and its brand, what is that pace of growth for your brand? The, the, you should paint the growth? Yes, sir. The pace yeah, of it. You know, you know, you know, the sky's the limit, I think, really. I think, um, you know, I'm blown away with the following we have and it's, it's surprising me all the time. And, uh, but, we, you know, it's all about our people. And I want to grow as fast as our people grow. When we have great sous chefs that want to be executive chefs, oh, let's grow. When I have great system managers that want to be general managers, let's grow. So I want to grow really organically and as fast as our people grow. Um, but I want—I don't want to get too big. I want to keep calls special, and unique to the Southeast. And uh, you know what we do in Charleston and Somerville and Greenville and Columbia every day. I want to create that and and uh, you know instill that power in the team to make it special in each location. How do you have good growth with smart growth? You know, I think just smart growth is with people, you know, and that's good growth, you know. I mean, I think, you know, in, in business, you know, you know, they say if you're not growing, you're, you're dying. and You know, so, you know, healthy growth is, is key, but it's all about your people. I don't want to force it. We don't want to force it. We want to do it right because, um, you know, there's, diners have so many choices these days. They can... You know, there's so many great restaurants in a town like Nashville or Charleston or Columbia, Greenville, Somerville. We want to, you know, create that unique and special experience, place you want to go to celebrate that birthday or the anniversary or that great job promotion. You got you want to get out of the house. You know, don't forget we're, we're competing against grocery stores because I can cook a great steak at home, you know. <laughs> I hear that all the time. Guests say, oh, man, I can cook a great steak at home. But I said, let me do the dishes tonight. It's mm -hmm. come on out, come on out, and let's just try our steak and and uh, let us uh, give it give it a shot and hopefully make you a fan and make you want to come back. What is unique about Hall's Chop House? You know, it's our people, and our hospitality. You know, it's how you feel when you walk in that front door, that first handshake, um, till you're walking out into the 
beautiful night and just feeling not only fulfilled and satisfied you get your money's worth of the food you pay for and, uh, but just you feel good about life and um that's that's what it is that's what's unique and it's it's family still even though we there's um, more restaurants than we've ever had before there's mm-hmm. still it's a family operation we just we care we care about every guest walking in and out of our front doors and I want to get back to that in just a second, but how do you, Billy? <laughs> You're not Billy. <laughs> you call, me, you call me Billy, call me Tommy. It's all right. <laughs> Put your unique food out there and not limit yourself. You mean me, me personally? Oh, the, the, <laughs> the brand, the brand. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, like I said, just because you want it, I don't want it to be watered down. I want it to still be unique. And uh, special, you know, hey, I got a reservation next week at Hall's Chop House. I got a great, res- great reservation at High Cotton or Snob or going out to Folly Beach to read us. That's what it is. I think it's, I just want to make it special and unique and not just a regular dinner. Um, but it's, just, it's, a, it's a great time in your life to be able to go out and touch glasses with somebody about a special occasion you had, or whether it's your, your, your spouse or your uh, co workers. And, um, uh, that's all. That's all. I want to make it unique and special. And going back to Nashville, Tommy, how did you go about researching what was in your location before you and why are they not really no longer there? You know, so actually, our, it's pretty cool about this location here where it's brand new. Mm. And so it's a total build out. And uh, the developers, it was a former, they call it, used to call it Palmer Lake in Nashville. And um, they built this beautiful development there. We have um, a Conrad Hotel going in across the across the cul-de-sac from us huh. we have a beautiful um new skyrise condominiums a millennial style office building and uh, commercial office space above us so we're on the ground level we're brand new we're fixing up to our specs and uh and our, how we kind of create our flow and our energy it's uh it's pretty cool so we got to design it from scratch and that was definitely a draw for why we're there too it's nice to uh, not have a, a pre-existing place we can make it the way we want to make it yeah absolutely and i know you all don't think about this from a business standpoint but what restaurants in the national area are mm-hmm. successful and i hate to ask this which ones are actually yeah. failures you know the failures I, I don't know um the success though it's everywhere all the restaurants i go to um, my favorite i love michael mina's uh, bourbon it's on the jw marriott it's a phenomenal phenomenal space uh jeff ruby it's a great restaurant tour out of cincinnati ohio they do a phenomenal job. Kane Prime is another great steakhouse. But everybody's there. Capitol Grill and Del Frisco's and Ruth Chris, the Palm. I mean, so we just want to play a part. We're hoping um, there's enough to go around for everybody. And uh, But they all put a great quality product out there, great service in a beautiful environment. And that's what we want to do. But I keep telling our crew, we got to take it to another notch higher and really make guests feel special. Absolutely. I want to get the customer service in just a second. Yeah. But but uh, you talked about this earlier, but what exactly will the floor plan be like for this restaurant? You know, so, you know, it's 327 seats. Mm. Um, it's our largest halls, uh, chop house, a 65 seat patio overlooking Broadway, um, a beautiful garden out, for, out back as well. We're even going to have a little fire pit. Um, we're going to have it uh, covered and temperature controlled and so you can sit it all year round. The weather in Nashville is very similar to Charleston. We'll have a little cooler winters and, than we do. and uh, uh, Nice, little more temperature-controlled summers. And so it's going to be wonderful to have that operation. That'll be unique to us. Um, big, live, vibrant bar, live music, seven nights a week in the bar. And we've had some great acts to hit us up from country music to great soul and, and blues. And don't forget our famous gospel brunch will be coming in as well. We're very excited about that. And um, inside, we have lots of nooks and crannies for little small, intimate dining rooms, uh, which I think the guests will really enjoy. Absolutely. And does this current market uh, support you expanding more locations in the future? Absolutely. This, this you know, means so much to our growth. You know, we can come into Nashville and, and do a great job. Um, but if, we, if we're not, you know, if you know, option, you know, failure is not an option. So if it, but if it doesn't go well, yeah, I'm not going to grow. But we're going we're gonna to keep growing when this becomes a home run. But I want to be the place where people, locals in Nashville, 
say that's our steakhouse. That's where we go for a great lunch or dinner or Sunday brunch. And um, I, w- I want business people to be able to go there to, to break bread, to sell um, their products and um, feel special and unique. Um, I want it to be a great bar. It's kind of an every man's restaurant where they can go to a bar and sit and have a steak at the bar and a glass of wine, watch a ball game by themselves, um, or, or whether they're going with friends too. Um, but that's very important to us. And I know you talked about, you know, obviously the other restaurants around Nashville, but how have you identified what you're doing that no one else is actually doing in that area? You know, it, you know, it, <clears throat> all, you know, there's nothing diff- unique about it. Our, our, definitely our flavors of our steaks are unique. I think our quality of our, of our food, what our executive chef Matthew Niesner has done. Um, Cause I think the steaks are steaks, but it's the sides that really set you apart and our sides. Are, are, are you know very very special and uh i think that will set us apart but it's the hospitality of our men and women we can put together this great restaurant this beautiful restaurant but if we don't have the soul and the heart of the from the employees inside that are believing and pulling together to make it happen um then we're out of luck so we're gonna that's where we're, we're working hard to create that culture and uh the level of hospitality that can compete against the best and what team do you need to run this particular restaurant? You know, big team. We're going to have over 250 employees. We're going to have, um, you know, 75 servers, bartenders, uh, great big kitchen staff as well. So we have a big team we're putting together, we're hiring. And they all have the same purpose. We want, we want to make every guest a repeat guest and uh, make them have a great experience, whether coming in for a $5 an uh, appetizer and a glass of wine or, um, you know, a $125 steak. We'll have all those options there for them. But it's up to um, our people to make them feel really special. How do you actually attract and retain those customers? Yeah. Well, the, the customers, you know, <clears throat> the, the retain them off, they're, they're, that's the best form of flattery to me. Is, uh, you know, they can tell you the food was great and the service is great, but it's when they keep coming back again. That's when you know you're doing it right. And, uh, but yeah, the, to, to attract them, hopefully our, you know, we're going to market, we're going to make, make people aware of what we are and who we are and what we've done in Charleston. We've got some great accolades and hopefully they'll come and give us a shot. And once they give us a shot, it's up to us to really capture them and uh, make them feel special when they want to come back again. So we'll, we'll continue to work hard on that. What was the role of fine dining before Hall's Chop House? Man, you know, the fine dining is changing constantly. Um, you know, we've, we've gone from a period where people were scared to come to a restaurant. And, I, you know, we still see it, too. They're very, you know, it's to be around so many people and to, you know, take a mask off and uh, exhale, relax. You know, that's fine dining. It's, it's, you know, let us treat you. You're our guests in our house. and. Uh, you know, let us meet your needs. And if it's not right, let's fix it. That's fine, Diane. We care. We want you to have a great experience. You give us an hour and a half, two or three hours of your time today to break bread. Let us take care of you. So we've adjusted through the pandemic. And, um, you know, people are feeling good. But now, you know, I know TV news and things are changing. And we're watching that closely. And, uh, mass mandates and stuff like that. But we want guests to feel comfortable and um, come in there in a clean, safe, warm environment where they can um, live life and enjoy. What was the biggest difference about customer service when you, when you began in the fine dining mm-hmm. arena to right now? Uh, I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's, the you know, we actually have to work harder now uh, than ever. You know, I think expectations are, are are high. I think there's so many great restaurants out there that really raise that bar up. We got to continue to push the envelope, you know, because it's in the details and those small little details that really make it special. And so we work hard at finding those details and those connecting moments with the guests um, to make them feel comfortable. That's what it is. You, you know, you connect with them to make them feel comfortable, put them at ease, and then do your job put out great quality food and a great, great quality environment. And that goes a long way. So, but yeah, from the difference of, from 
when I began in, um, you know, 1995 and uh, to today, 2022, it's just we have to work harder. Mm. Expectations are out there. Guests expected and they're paying for it. Prices are higher than ever. It's, it's expensive. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of that. You know, I'm a father of two and for me to bring my family out for lunch or dinner, it's, it's a challenge. And, um, so we have to make sure that guests are getting their money's worth and fulfilled. And, uh, we got to take care of their needs harder than ever. And what are those other challenges, Tommy, that worry you right now about the future of the restaurant business? You know, you know, our, you know, our, what we do in the fine dining world is so unique. You can't buy it on Amazon. You can't order it, um, on Uber Eats. They do a great job. And I love that. I love to have those conveniences. But to get out of the house and, and get dressed up and come to a restaurant, you know, it's, um, you know, it's just something unique that, you know, it's just, I think that's, it's just a thing. I think it's going to be more, you know, more special and unique for the future in 10 years. You know, it's, it's a big deal and it's changed, you know, back in the day, it was dinner and a movie, dinner and a play. What are we doing on Friday night? We're going out. You know, we're going to have a little bite to eat, and we're going out to this bar, this show. But now it's like, what are you doing Friday night? We're going to Hall's Chop House. That's a big deal. They get the reservations weeks and weeks out. And so the expectations just got higher and higher and higher. So we have to work harder and harder. But I think the future-wise, too, I think it's continue to be the, a big deal in dining and breaking bread together and going out. And speaking of reservations, this might be a silly question. How many reservations are there right now for Nashville? You know, I haven't opened the book yet. Oh. Um, but I've got a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails about reservations. And as soon as we open up that book, Quinn, you will know about it, and we'll put it out on the social media. And because uh, we want everybody to get a chance to come see this beautiful restaurant, because I'm telling you guys, it is unique, it's special. And uh, I want to be written about for a long, long time. And, um, you know, it's got the footprint of my dad and, and what he started. And, and we want to keep that legacy and grow it. And I want to showcase it. I want to show this place off because I know I'm going to make Nashville proud. I'm going to make um, all our friends and family, all our great supporters through the years proud. But, yes, reservations coming soon. How has fine dining changed you personally? <laughs> you know, I am. Um, I have a hard time because I, this is what I do. And so I'm probably like you watching the news or something like that. You see things. And so my wife says, sit down, relax. It's not your restaurant. Have a glass of wine. Enjoy. And once I do that, I really can enjoy it. I, I, you know, I love it. I love, you know, it's nice to be pampered. You know, life's hard. Our world's hard. And I, I, you know, we fly up to Nashville and we hit in the, um, the airports and the planes and, mm -hmm. It's just tough. It's tough out there and you land, you get an Uber and you, you get to your hotel and check in. It's like, then you get out to a restaurant and just like relax, let it, let them, let us do our job. And, and that's, that's fine dining. Let us do that job. Let us take care of you. It's that the one time in your life. Like let's let somebody else work hard for you and just sit and you relax and enjoy, enjoy the people you're with, your family and friends and your coworkers and, uh, you know, just laugh and enjoy and, and uh, take all the stress of life out of your hands. That's fine dining. Mm -hmm. uh, great quality is fine dining, you know, from the stemware to the uh, to the great quality beef and the great, you just can't get that at the supermarket. Um, and then the way I think Hall's cooks it, I think it's unique and special. It's simple. It's kosher salt, black pepper, a little bit of butter. And it's just let the beef and the quality of that beef shine. That goes a long way. But it's that martini, the way it's shook. You can't do it at the house. No. It's that, uh, you know, it's that cold beer, that great cold glass. You just can't get it anywhere else. It's just unique. And I think it's always a fine dining. is is not truly fine dining unless you finish off some great dessert. And we have some of the best desserts. And we're going to make them fresh in-house every day in the halls of Nashville. And, uh, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. What menu item at Hall's Chop House uh, describes you? Man, I'm simple. I'm pretty. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a wet age ribeye, sixteen ounce ribeye, a baked potato. <laughs> you know, I'm just keep it simple. Uh, no 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 thrills. Um, I'm I'm 
you know, blue collar, hard working. Let's go. Let's get it done. And, um, to hardly get a chance to actually sit and enjoy. A lot of times I'm eating that steak standing up by the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's what I love. And that's kind of who I am. Yeah, that, that is really amazing. <laughs> Well, Tommy Hall, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome Quentin, back. Quentin, what's, what's your favorite meal at Hall's Chop House? Uh, the mashed potatoes, the macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yeah. well, are you a lobster macaroni and cheese guy or a regular mac and cheese? Just regular macaroni and cheese because yeah. I don't eat seafood. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I love the steak sandwich, too. Oh, it's, it's um, the steak sandwich is... Yeah, it's trouble. <laughs> yes, yes, it's too good. Too good. I got to stay uh, skinny here. Is it lunchtime yet? Yeah, uh, 11, uh, 30, minutes, 30 minutes away. <laughs> well, I'm at Hall's tonight, Quentin. I'd love to see you. Stop by and, and uh, I'll get some. I'll make, make sure you get some loaded mashed potatoes and maybe some mac and cheese. Okay, that's a deal. <laughs> that's a deal. <laughs>